I'm going to start today with an image of St. Peter's Square in Vatican City in the year 2005, when crowds thronged to see the new pope. Here's the same image from just about a decade later. <laughs> Notice the sea of smartphones? It's amazing how wireless internet has connected five billion of the world's phones. Which makes me wonder, what would this scene look like a decade from now? So here's my bold prediction. In the next decades, we'll connect 50 billion of the world's everyday objects, beyond just our phones. Which means nearly everything you saw in that image Clothes, shoes, wallets, and even the streets will be connected to the internet. But of course, they won't all be charged with power-hungry cellular and Wi-Fi, unless, of course, you'd like to charge your shoes every day. So as a wireless researcher, I've long been fascinated with the question, what would be the wireless technology that connects everyday objects like these? And this, led me to something we see every day, radio frequency identification stickers, or RFID tags for short. Now, these stickers are amazing. They're paper thin, like the one in my hand. They're lightweight, completely battery free, fully wireless, and just cost a few cents. So you can stick them on anything you care about, say your wallet, and identify and track it over time using an RFID reader. RFID tags are everywhere. They're in your passports, ID cards, and bus passes. They're scanned from a reader like this one here on your bus, which then identifies and locates the tag so that you're built correctly. Here's an RFID tag attached to a sticker with your check-in luggage at the airport, used to track your bags. But then why is it that airlines still lose luggage if they already have these tags? <laughs> so here's the problem. It turns out that RFIDs are extremely limited in their range. This is because they don't have a battery of their own. Instead, they harvest wireless energy from a nearby reader, say, in a baggage belt at the airport. And these tags can only be scanned within 5 to 10 meters around these readers which means, for all practical purposes, they're just glorified barcodes. But what if we could somehow expand the range of these tags from a few meters to eight times as much, tens of meters? This means we could now span large spaces, homes, offices, and yes, airports, transforming these ordinary stickers into true long-range wireless radios. This is exactly what we've done. Our key innovation is to exploit collaboration between many RFID readers in the environment without modifying these cheap stickers whatsoever. Now, these readers cooperatively beam energy towards the tag so that it responds. We then repeat this process for other tags in the environment so that they respond as well. To better understand how our approach works, let's revisit a classic physics experiment, the double slit experiment. In 1801, Thomas Young showed that if you shine a beam of light through two tiny slits and then onto a wall, it creates a wave-like energy pattern. Some bright spots where the light waves add up and other dark spots where the waves cancel out. Wireless signals, much like light, behaves in the exact same way. When signals from many RFID readers propagate, they add up to reinforce each other at some points and cancel each other at other points. This means we get a pattern of high and low energy similar to Young's experiment. So all we need to do is to make sure that there's a bright spot of high energy wherever an RFID tag is in the environment. Our secret sauce is an innovative algorithm that sweeps the space with many such patterns until we quickly discover all tags. 
we then identify which tag responded when to both know the number and precise location of all tags. Our experimental results show a remarkable eight-fold increase in the range of these tags. And this enhanced range opens up a host of new applications that makes everyday objects around us smart. So imagine the implications for smart inventory in retail stores where the theft prevention devices, normally at the entrances and exits, can now track items throughout the store. Here's the deployment of our system at the football field in Carnegie Mellon, where we could track players and objects on the field with these stickers attached, all the way from the bleachers on the sides. Useful for sports analytics. By attaching these machine-washable tags on everyday fabric, we can track the posture of the user's spine, useful for health sensing. Now, you can either hide these tags between layers of fabric, or you can sport them out in the open and make a fashion statement. <laughs> we can also build gesture-based interfaces where we track the user's arms and legs as they interact with games or to track their fitness and health. This information can now be displayed on a dashboard on your computer or smartphone. And since these tags are only, be des only designed to respond to user-authenticated readers, your information is kept completely private. We can also transform ordinary pillows into smart pillows that sense their shape over time so that they know how well you slept last night. We can even alter ordinary surfaces into touch screens that can sense the exact location and pressure with which you touch the surface, all for a cost that's less than $1. But perhaps the true potential of our work is in monitoring city-scale infrastructure. Now, since we're here in Pittsburgh, the city of bridges, we decided to showcase this on a bridge. Over 50,000 bridges in the United States are in need of repair, according to the American Road and Transportation Builders Association. So we decided to test the structural health of the 10th Street Bridge right here at Pittsburgh, a 388-meter-long suspension bridge. By attaching many RFID tags along this bridge, we sensed its sag and shape over time to measure its structural health and safety. It was safe, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> we then found that our measurements closely aligned with a recent survey of the bridge, showing our work's potential in measuring city-scale infrastructure. So in the past decades, we've connected 5 billion of the world's smartphones. The next frontier for wireless innovation is connecting 50 billion of the world's everyday objects, making them smart as well. In the future, every object that you own and buy will be a smart object that serves our well-being and our communities. And perhaps the difference between today's regular object and the future smart object is just a plain old sticker. Thank you. <laughs>